Hi guys, my name is Beth and welcome to my channel, The Bookworm Trait. So this is my second attempt filming my magical TBR. Um, my first attempt there was like some weird like in the background so we're filming it again. So this is going to be my first time doing the Owls Readathon. And I'm really excited because it was one of the first readathons that I actually came across when I got into booktube. So I'm really looking forward to taking part. I've chosen the career of potioner. I think I'm pretty good at cooking so I just feel like if I went to Hogwarts potions would be my topic. I think me and Snape, I think we would get on. <laughs> so I'm going to start off by going through my potion subjects which will obviously be the books that I am going to prioritise this month. I'm then going to talk about the rest of the books that I will try and read if I can get round to it. So without too much more waffle, let's just get into the TBR. So my first required reading is Arithmancy. And for this I have to read a book written by at least two authors. I'm going with Obsidio. Now I'm sure you're all aware that Obsidio is the third in the Illuminae series. So I can't really talk to you too much about what this book is about without spoiling the rest of it. But just to briefly cover what happens in this series, there is a space corporation which has found out that a planet is illegally mining a substance. I can't remember what that substance is called. And rather than reporting this planet, they decide to wipe them out. However, some people escape and this corporation is basically chasing them through space, trying to kill them. Um, so Obsidio is our third book, so this is where I guess everything's going to come to a head. I am really excited for this. Both books have been five stars for me so far, so I'm hoping this is going to be another five star read. The thing that I really love about this series is the fact that it's written not in prose. Um, so it's interviews, it's narrations of video footage, web pages, diaries, just to open it on a random page, surveillance footage. That was a really boring page to open it on. So yeah, you, you've got pages like this. So it's a very visual book, it makes it really easy to read. I've read the other two in no more than a week, so I'm going to probably start with this because I should get through it pretty quickly. The next subject that I need to do is Care of Magical Creatures and for that I need to read a book with a land animal on the cover. For this prompt I am going to be reading Lumberjanes. This is a graphic novel that, to be honest, I don't know that much about. <laughs> um, I've seen it around a lot and I really like the art style so for me when I'm looking at them for a graphic novel that's kind of the number one thing that I'm looking at is the art style and then hopefully the story will back it up. We have a stag's head on the cover so it kind of fills the brief, kind of. I'm going to be reading this on my iPad. It does come free, I think it's with Script. Script? Script. <laughs> it is going to be my first experience of reading a graphic novel in a digital format so I'm hoping that I will get on alright with it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what it's about so I can't really tell you any more than that. The next subject is charms and the prompt for this is age line read an adult book. I'm also going to be reading a graphic novel for this prompt and that is the Shades of Magic graphic novel The Seal Prince. I don't technically know if this is classed as adult. I would class A Darker Shade of Magic as an adult book but I don't know if it actually is. I think it is. So I'm just assuming that this is going to be adult too. I actually haven't finished A Darker Shade of Magic yet. I've only read the first book. I did enjoy it, but it's just one of these things where I just haven't got around to picking up the next book. I think this book follows the king of... Where's Kel from? Yeah, Red London. I think he's from Red London. But yeah, this follows the dad of Kel and whatever the prince is called, um, his life before he became king. I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy this, so as I said, with graphic novels the first first thing that I'm usually pulled towards is the art style, and the art style for this is 
not my favourite. It's very classic, where I probably prefer something a bit more cutesy. <laughs> but hopefully I'll enjoy the story. Um, we'll see. Uh, next subject is herbology, and the prompt for that is to read a book with a plant on the cover. I'm going to be reading Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. This book follows three people who work in an office. There's two women who are friends and they instant message each other all day about things going on in their personal lives. And there's a guy in IT who has been reading these messages. <laughs> Over the course of time, he starts to fall in love with one of the women, but obviously he's been reading her messages and he can't really like, <laughs> be like hey I know everything about your life <laughs> so it's just a it sounds like it's just gonna be a really cute love story between a creepy guy and a woman in an office there's a lot of like emails and text chat in this so I think this is gonna be a really nice easy read it just sounds like it's gonna be a cute book I think I'm gonna really enjoy it it's probably not gonna be a five star read because I'm not a huge contemporary reader but I have high hopes for this so that brings me to my final required subject, which is, of course, potions. <laughs> the prompt for this is to read a sequel, and I'm going to be listening to the audiobook of The Wicked King. This is another sequel, so again, I can't go into too much information about what this book is about. Um, if for some reason you don't know what The Cruel Prince is about, it basically follows the story of three sisters who are stolen from the mortal world by a fairy. It transpires that the eldest sister is actually the daughter of this fairy and he decides to bring all three girls up as his own. So what then follows is your kind of typical YA fantasy mixed with a bit of political intrigue. However we've got some really lovely morally grey characters in this story. I wouldn't say I'm completely on the Cruel Prince hype train. I enjoyed it but I also really hated it at the same time. So I'm hoping Wicked King will kind of sway me either way and I'll either think, yes, I love this series or no, nah, it's not for me. So we'll see. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of the prompts um, in alphabetical order and I'll just say kind of the chances of me reading them. I've recently been quite liberal with my TBRs and allow myself to mood read. So some of these I've got a couple of suggestions for. Um, some of these I might be hyped to read now and actually when it comes time to do so, I'm not interested in them. So starting with Ancient Runes, the prompt for this one is a retelling. And like many people, I'm going with A Curse So Dark and Lonely. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling which follows a girl who has cerebral palsy I believe this is a portal fantasy, but don't quote me on that. I've heard really good things about this book, but to be honest, I'm not that interested in it. I'm very picky with Beauty and the Beast retellings. It's my favourite fairy tale, and I just don't think that that story has a place in the modern world. <laughs> I am really interested to find out about this, but yeah, it's probably going to be quite low down my list of books that I'm going to read this month. My next subject is astronomy and this is to read a book with the word star in the title. I'm kind of between two books at the minute. I have Off Fire and Stars which is a YA fantasy about two princesses. They live in a world where magic is kind of looked down upon um, and one of the princesses discovers that she has magic. This princess is sent to live in another kingdom where she's trying to like learn about this kingdom, keep her magic concealed and she's also gonna marry this guy. She's spending a lot of time with his sister and they really really don't get on. But after an assassination these two princesses have to join forces to try and find out who is responsible for this attack. So as they do so they fall in love. So I'm really hyped for this but I'm a bit wary of it. I, I really love the idea of a typical YA story where instead of your typical YA romance you have a female female romance but then I'm like do I want to read a typical YA story so I'm not 
I'm not sure. I'm like hyped for it, but I'm also not hyped for it. The other book which I'm probably more likely to read is Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. I'm currently reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone and I do plan to read the second one anyway so chances are I will go for that I just don't have that with me at this moment in time. Again as it's a sequel can't really tell you what it's about but to just give you a brief overview of the series. Daughter of Smoke and Bone series follows our main character Karu who is she's kind of like an orphan she's been brought up by this family of fantastical kind of creatures that are human animal hybrids they've kept their life very secret from her but she begins to discover that there are other worlds and it's the story about her journey probably not the best description but i'm only like 200 pages in and I don't know what spoilers yet, so we'll just <laughs> keep the description brief. <laughs> I just love Lainey Taylor's writing. I love Strange to Dreamer. I'm loving Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I'm sure I'm going to love the second book, so I'm quite likely to pick that up. But I really want to read this too. So we'll just have to see. Our next subject is Defence Against the Dark Arts. And the prompt for this is to read a book with R in the title. So for this I've selected The Raven Boys. I'm probably the only person in the world who doesn't know what this book is about. I know we've got a girl called Blue and there's a group of guys and they do something. But I don't know what it's about. It's been on my TBR for ages and I am really feeling in the mood to read it. So I think this is quite likely to get a read if I get through my potions work. So I can see that my battery is running a little bit low so I'm going to try and get through the rest of the books as quickly as I can. So our next subject is divination and this is a book set in the future. Again I'm between two books for this one both of which are rereads so I would either like to read Under the Never Sky or Uglies. Both of these are dystopias. Um, Under the Never Sky definitely has more of a fantastical element to it. Under the Never Sky is one of my all-time favourite books. It's kind of your typical YA dystopia, but, you know, I've got a soft spot for it. On the other hand, Uglies is maybe a lot more hard-hitting and telling of society. I don't know which one I'm going to go with. It's going to probably be a last-minute, like, spur-of-the-moment decision, if I get round to those at all this month anyway. So I'm going to talk about History of Magic and Muggle Studies together. So the prompt for History of Magic is to read a book published at least 10 years in the past and for Muggle Studies is to read a contemporary. I'm currently in the process of rereading the Georgia Nicholson series. So for these prompts I would read books 3 and 4 in this series which are Knocked Out by My Nunga Nungas and Dancing in My Nutty Pants and I would say if I finish my potions work, these are probably the first two books that I'll pick up because I can sit there and read them in one sitting. I could probably, if it was a Saturday, I could read both of them in the de in a day, so I'll always definitely read them. The Georgia Nicholson series is a series that was published when I was growing up and is just hilarious. It's just absolutely hilarious. It follows Georgia Nicholson as she grows up and it just a contemporary looking at just life as a teenager in Britain and looking at family relationships, romantic relationships and friendships and school. It's very nostalgic for me. <laughs> One thing I will say is that going back and reading these books haven't necessarily aged that well. There's some body shaming in there, there's some very negative stereotypes about lesbians in it. It's a shame because the books are so good and so funny but I don't feel like I could necessarily recommend them to younger readers now because there's just some things that are just a little bit uh, awkward. And the final prompt is to read a book with sprayed edges or a red cover for Transfiguration and I have selected The Orphanage of the Gods which has these gorgeous teal sprayed edges. So this is the book that came in last month's Lumicrate and this book follows a girl called Hero 
who is the daughter of a god. Gods did live in this world, but after a revolution, they have been killed. And all the children rounded up and are living in an orphanage. Any children that display magical abilities will disappear and are never seen again. Hero is the only orphan who has ever escaped the orphanage, but in doing so, her sister has been caught. So Hero is on a quest to save her sister, and I believe she meets up with some gods who have survived, who are living in the north, but they, of course, have their own plans for her. This book sounds so up my alley. I just find the idea of that plot so intriguing. But I'm probably not very likely to pick this book up unless I finish everything else because I feel like this is going to be quite a dense read and it's going to require a lot of concentration and could possibly put me into a slump. That being said though, it's got that really nice big spacey text that I like. So I don't know. And those edges, they just... I love them. So although I think I will really, really enjoy this book, I'm probably not going to pick it up this month. So those are all the books on my Owls TBR. Let me know if you're going to read any of these or let me know what you're going to be reading. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.